Honestly, I used to get a kick out of her silliness. I mean, it was fun to watch, but it was basically harmless, right? I don't feel that way anymore. This foolishness has had devastating results. First, the foolishness. Okay. <laughs> how do you... How do you... <laughs> Slow down, everybody. <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> as long as you're having fun, Madam Vice President, look, she was charged with cleaning up the border, and how's that going? It is a disaster, and I believe a lot of it can be laid at her feet. You know, she was directly given the responsibility of leading the federal government's effort to take control of the situation. Look at it now, side by side, a foolish vice president and a horrible situation. There is a correlation. She does not have the ability to fix it. She actually doesn't have the ability or qualifications to be vice president. Kamala Harris was a diversity hire. This is the result when you think about things that don't matter before the things that do matter. Do you remember back in 2020, Joe Biden was in a box for some reasons, the, the beltway, the swamp told him first he had to pick a woman. I think it would be incredibly important for the, de for the Democratic ticket to have as the vice president uh, a woman. I cannot imagine that we have a Democratic ticket without a woman on it. A lot of capable, interesting candidates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He should pick a woman, I think, don't uh, you? Yes. <laughs> yes, but that wasn't good enough. After George Floyd, it had to be not only a woman, but a woman of color. I think this is a moment uh, to put a woman of color on that ticket. 100 prominent black men said the urgency to pick a black woman has gone from something that should happen to something that has to happen. Yes, I think he needs to choose an African-American woman. Black women are the base of the Democratic Party. How silly, right? We didn't pick somebody who had the administrative ability or perhaps uh, the readiness to be president. No, we made it quite clear. They made it quite clear. It had to be a woman and it had to be a person of color. How are those aspects, those qualities, helping her get the job done. They aren't. And don't forget, Joe Biden gave her a very big job. Madam Vice President, thank you. I gave you a tough job and you're, you're smiling, but there's no one better capable of trying to organize this. Place. Well, thank you, Mr. President, and for having the confidence in me. Hey, the photo op was fun. After that, it meant work, and she's not down with work. She loves the photo op though. Hey, remember hanging around Joe Biden? Every time he came out, there she was. They really were quite a team. At one point, it started to look like she was perhaps a bodyguard or a secret service agent. She was there every step of the way until Afghanistan. After that fiasco and Joe started to look like he might even be toxic, uh, Kamala was nowhere to be seen. She kind of went underground for a while. Joe, you can handle these questions on your own. First time she showed up, and this really underscored how little she had to offer the Situation Room. She was keeping a low profile in there, sitting right next to the president, but somehow burying her head in that memo in front of her. She did not want to be there, and she had very little to offer. Let's contrast all of this to Donald Trump. Hmm? Did he avoid the border issue because it was hard? Of course he didn't. He was, he dove in head first. He tried to do the impossible. Everybody told him, don't build a wall. You can't build a wall, huh? Right? Tip of the spear. That is leadership. Where are we now? Well, they had to dismantle everything that Trump did. Trump derangement syndrome. They hated him that much that anything he did, even the good stuff, they had to wash their hands of. They had to dismantle it. Make no mistake, Donald Trump was right on the substance, substance and even on the rhetoric about the border. Do you remember when he first declared for president uh, in June of 2015? About a third of his speech was about illegal immigration and the fake news seized on something they found offensive, but it was actually true. When Mexico sends its people they're not sending their best. They're not sending you. They're not sending you. They're sending people that have lots of problems, and they're bringing those problems with us. 
They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. It's no joke. There are now reports emerging that there's bad things happening in these big groups. There are lots of great people in there, people desperate to become Americans. This is not on them. This is on the policies that encourage them to come here. And we are hearing reports of sexual assaults and attacks. You heard that there are men from Afghanistan coming here with child brides. Donald Trump was right, but it just sounded, well, it was too much truth and the mainstream media could not handle it. I wouldn't call it a dog whistle. I think it's an outright racist campaign. How can you succeed when you say things like that? Well, you can't, again, Gail, if the question is how can you become president, you can't by saying things like that. 14 million people he's uh, smearing and maligning. Right. That's wrong. So, and we again, very, this very was the drumbeat. This is the day yeah, after he declared pretty much, them. and uh, that's all you heard. They said you can't be president if you say things like that. What, the truth? He was telling the truth. You can't be president. Hey, he was doing things. Don't forget, these other politicians, they say things. He did things, and that is the key difference. Did this work when Kamala Harris tried it? Her words? I want to be clear to folks in this region who are thinking about making that dangerous trek to the United States-Mexico border. Do not come. Do not come. Right, right. <laughs> that should do it, huh? Um, by the way, we have, forgive me, screwed over so many of these people, particularly those from Haiti. Do you know we are sending them back to Haiti, even though most of them did not come from Haiti? They may have been born in Haiti, but some of them, most of them, haven't been there for many, many years. That's why there was outrage in Port-au-Prince. You brought us back here? This is where my grandfather came from. I live in Chile. I live in Argentina. This actually happened. Take a look at these ID cards uh, that were collected by authorities. You can see they're from Haiti, but they live in Chile. Um, a remarkable situation that has been totally, totally unreported. Now, uh, Joe Biden, by the way, at one point in his life, <laughs> many years ago, spoke, uh, well, at least talked a big game, even a logical game, about the border. No great country can say it is secure without being able to control its borders, period. What I would do about it is what I propose to do about it almost 13 years ago. I would radically ramp up the number of border security guards we have, the use of electronic surveillance material we have to guard the border, and the number of what they call virtual fences. They're not literally fences. Virtual fences from aerostat balloons on to where we, whereby we could control the border. Much, much better. 2007, he was running for president at the time. Hot air, okay, just words, and they were cheap. Doing something, that's hard, and he's not doing it. And let's face it, he's not capable of doing much at all. By the way, did you hear the federal government has acted decisively? They've removed those horses. The one thing in this uh, whole equation that was actually working, they gave in to the fake news, they gave in to their worst impulses, the fake news, the far left, these men were not hurting anybody. They weren't whipping anybody. They were doing their job, and it was remarkable. We heard today officially the horses will be removed from the Del Rio border sector. Look, Joe Biden wasn't vetted last year when he should have been. We were doing our best. We were telling you things that nobody else would touch. Now the fake news is finally, finally catching up. There is a lot more to learn about Joe Biden. We've got something great when we come back. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.